In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. When um, Pastor Ken called me, um, my goodness, I don't remember what day it was, later in this week, I um, uh, kept in touch with him concerning his mom and asked if I would be available for this time. So I started scrambling, and he was kind. He sent me the um, introduction to this series. And you have that in your handout, if you want to look at that. Uh, what struck me is I read through that introduction to that series, and it's our series for this season of Lent, as we take another look at renewal in our life as God's people. What struck me in that was the first sentence. Who could dispute that life in this world is filled with trials, challenges, and tests? I think that was Thursday when I received that. And 17 had been killed. 14 had been injured at the high school in Parkland, Florida. And then came the days of copycats to that and uh, lockdowns that happened after that experience. While all the while we were already dealing with domestic violence issues and questions and mental health issues surrounding us and discussions about gun control and questions about um, our government leaders intertwined with already probably what could have been going on in our homes concerning our marriages and our families, and our job struggles. Not to mention the uh, flu bug that's been bothering many of us, and other health crises, as Joanne is experiencing, and losses. And I could go on and on and on, and you could probably too. It's true. We live in an imperfect world, and it's always going to be imperfect. And trials and struggles and tests abound. But as people of God, I think it's important for us to see, not but as people of God and as people of God, it's important to see the second sentence. Our Heavenly Father transforms those experiences for His children into opportunities for growth and renewal. The challenge for us is to trust our Father in all things as He desires to enable us to stand the test. If you look at those scripture readings for today, if you had looked at them ahead of time maybe, you would have seen the story of Abraham and Isaac. And you would have seen how Abraham faced that test of believing and trusting in God's promise that from Abraham's family, beginning with Isaac, from Abraham's family would come this uh, family that the Savior of God would be born in. That's what God had said to Abraham. And now comes the test. God is saying to Abraham to do what with this first son, Isaac? Put him on the altar and sacrifice him. And in the gospel reading that I just read, uh, we are reminded that even Jesus faced tests and trials in this world while he was in the wilderness. And in both cases and in many others throughout Scripture and throughout our own very lives, God was present by His Spirit, calming and protecting and leading and providing growth and renewal in His grace. And through those times, He enables us to persevere and to stand the test. And so at the end of the introduction, there's the questions. What tests and trials are you facing right now? How is God at work by his spirit to strengthen you and to bring you growth and renewal? 
as he brings you through those experiences. The wilderness. I don't know what you think of when you hear the word the wilderness. The wilderness is mentioned many times in our scripture readings for today. And the wilderness, uh, I've come to believe it's often we find ourselves living in the wilderness. Not necessarily uh, physically, but emotionally. A wilderness in that way. And what I also find happens with people is I've come to understand that much of life is intertwined with that wilderness as much of life is about transitions. As I listen to people, it seems as though people believe that transitions really have two parts to them. That often people feel there's an ending immediately, like the next day or the next hour, followed by a new beginning. And that's the point of their transition, two parts. What I've come to understand in the work that I do now, and in my own personal life, I've come to understand is uh, William Bridges, author of Transitions, Making Sense Out of Life Changes, he contends that there are three parts to transitions. There's an ending. There's a new beginning somewhere. But he calls it a period of confusion and distress in between. Can you relate to that? Things end, things become different in our lives. We think something new is going to come and we're not real sure what it's going to look like and we wander. As people of God, as uh, people of the church who have studied the Old Testament, I couldn't help but think of this when I read that in Bridges' book. To go all the way back to the Old Testament and to see where the people of Israel were led out of Egypt, eventually ended up in the promised land, but wandered in that wilderness, in that period of confusion and distress. I'm hoping, praying, and believing that most of our wilderness wanderings personally don't last 40 years, but uh, sometimes it feels like that, I think. One of the things I, in studying about the wilderness and that time of the people of Israel, ran across this uh, definition of wilderness from the Hebrew word, Frederick Niedner, a place apart from words where words do not work, a place where you can't say what it is. Does that make sense? The wilderness. Often as things change in our lives or our, our relationships, as someone important to us dies, or as we struggle with an illness that seems to hang on for a long, long time, the it that I used to know about the way my life was is no longer the same, and I don't know what the new it is. In between is that place where we don't know the words yet to describe it, and we can't define for sure what it is. I've done a lot of disaster work in my days. I remember flying into New Orleans six months after Hurricane Katrina, and the whole morning people were talking to me about, when is it going to get back to the way it was? Because that's what we feel most comfortable with. I also discovered as I studied about the wilderness wanderings of the people of Israel, I studied that um, kind of three main points of that wilderness wandering, God's presence, the struggles of the people, and the movement of the people. And if you remember your study of the, uh, the wilderness wanderings in the book of Exodus, first of all, God's presence was shown in the pillar of cloud by day and by fire at night. Do you remember that? They had the opportunity to know no matter what, my God is here because that says so. And you and I have that same privilege in baptism and the Lord's Supper. No matter what, he's here and that says so. But still, what did the people do? They struggled. Even though they had meat and, and manna in front of them, what did they want to do? Where did they want to go? You can talk now. That's okay. Yeah. Where did they want to go? Back home. Not because they liked it. 
but they knew what it was like. And isn't that the struggle for us in the wilderness? I want to go back to what it was like, even though it wasn't real great. And that's our tendency. But the interesting piece for me in that study was this one. The movement of the people. Most of the movement for the people of Israel in the wilderness was not geographical. You know how far it is from Egypt to Jericho? 250 miles. About the distance from here to Atlanta, I think. I don't have my GPS in front of me. The greatest movement for the people of Israel was a spiritual and emotional movement. They had to become a different kind of nation. And there had to become this moving from the old generation and the old focus to the new generation and the new focus. And as in, isn't that what he often calls us to in the wilderness? Because what's important to see is it's in the wilderness where Israel's historic experiences became a foundation stone for her religion and ours. There are so many foundational teachings and lessons of the faith that are given to us and introduced to you and me in God's word in the wilderness. That's where we learn. That's where we grow. That's where we struggle. I often challenge people to tell me what major lesson you learned in life in good times. We learn in the wilderness. We learn in the struggles. But it feels like that often. Doesn't it? Doesn't it feel like that the map's upside down? Or you got a map of going to China when you thought you were going to Jericho? <laughs> it feels like things just get out of whack, and I don't even think that God knows where I'm headed. I surely don't know where I'm headed, is what we often see. So the words of our epistle reading for today are important to us. Come on, baby. There you go. Look at the first part. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Notice he's not saying we earned the crown of life. What's he saying? We received it. He gave it to us. We didn't earn it. There's no way we could earn it. He gave it to us. We received it. And he helps us to persevere through those times, and he's always present. But what I think is important for us to see in the second half there, where it talks about temptation and sin, and that God doesn't tempt us, that it's our own doing, it's important to understand that a lot of that stuff around temptation and sin, sin as I was taught as a little kid, sin, the definition is missing the mark missing the mark of what God's wisdom and will teaches us and what God's wisdom and will, the gift of life that he gives to us in that wisdom and will, missing that mark. And we do that in the wilderness as we battle between what we want, our will and wisdom, and God's will and wisdom. That's the battle that goes on. That's the nature of the wilderness as we try to find out what it is. That's what we see in our world today. And one of the things that I think is real important for us as we look there, it's important for us to understand that as we're going through that battle, as we're struggling with those things, and my will versus his will, there's a lot of people around us that are doing the same thing. And as God has called us in his love to care for people, as he has cared for us and called us to do that with others, it's important for us to listen to, to watch, to see who is hurting real bad and who is angry real bad. And it's important to be part of the ones that might get them some help or be help to them. It often strikes me as we pray for others here, how often do we pray not just that something would happen good, but for us to be part of that something 
And I think we've come to know in the situations in our world in the past week, it's important for us to watch and speak up as it's necessary. Because there's the gift. Nothing ever changes that. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. Shifting shadows. That's what the wilderness is like a lot of times. And he never changes. He comes down with his light and his love in our darkness and in our wilderness. And he calls us to be that to others. Henry Nouwen, a fan of mine. Well, I'm a fan of his. <laughs> you want to read that with me, please? Often we want to be able to see into the future. We say, how will next year be for me? Where will I be five or ten years from now? Mostly we have just enough light to see the next step. What we have to do in the coming hour or the following day, the art of living is to enjoy what we can see and not complain about what remains in the dark. When we are able to take the next step with the trust that we will have enough light for the step that follows, we can walk through life with joy and be surprised at how far we go. I don't know about you, but I don't define joy as out loud laughter, big smiles on my face all the time, uh, skipping and dancing. Well, I can't do that right now with my knees, so... Um, I just find joy as this inner peace, this inner consolation, this thing that fills my heart. And yeah, sometimes it does overflow into my face and my actions. I can live in joy because I don't know what the whole picture is going to look like. But he does guide me each step of the way as I'm tested in the wilderness. So, the promises of God. First, the promise to his son, who is our savior. And second, the promise to you and me that no matter what happens in our lives, no matter how much we are tested, our God is with us and sustains us by his grace. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you. Thank you for being a God that knows us, that knows our needs. Thank you for surrounding us, walking with us, even when we try to walk away from you. Thank you for understanding the wanderings in the wilderness. Help us to learn. Help us to grow. Help us to see that you're the one that helps us to persevere. And you're the one that shows that to us in your Son, our Savior, Christ Jesus. We thank you for being that light that comes from above to guide our days and to guide our steps. In Jesus' name, amen.